Since you clicked on this video, I'm thinking you probably want to uh, get a little bit faster at editing in Resolve 18. Well, I have some good things to show you. Huge thanks to Audio for sponsoring this video. More about them in a couple minutes. We're gonna cover some of my favorite tips for working quickly in Resolve. Then I'm gonna show you kind of a practical demo of editing a video game review. It's gonna to be tons of fun, let's jump in. First things first, it's really hard to argue with the power of keyboard shortcuts. I'm gonna go up to DaVinci Resolve under keyboard customization. Here's where you can set all of your shortcuts. You should set these to what you really like. Here are some things that I like to set. I pretty much leave everything at default except for P, which I set to append to end timeline. That's so if you have a clip selected in your source viewer, you can hit P and it will just add it to the end of your timeline. Super helpful. S I have set as split clip. Normally that is control backslash. I have Q set to ripple start to playhead and W set to ripple end to playhead. Those are normally control shift left or right bracket. And that's pretty much it. Those things alone are super helpful. Definitely mess around with this keyboard shortcut window because the more you can optimize the repetitive stuff, the better. Speaking of good workflow, have you checked out Audio? It's an awesome place to get tons of music and sound effects for your videos. It's used by thousands of top creators, global brands like Nike, Netflix, Toyota, Nintendo, the big boys. With Audio Pro, you get a license that covers any video platform from YouTube to broadcast TV, anything. There's new songs added every day. They're all cleared for YouTube monetization. And to make things that much sweeter, Audio is offering you guys a very special deal that you can only get through my link. $59 for your first year of Audio Pro. That's 70% off the normal price. Use code KC70 over at audio.com slash KC. Make sure to check that link in the description below. Let's get back to the workflow. Big thing I like to do is just start in the edit page and drag my footage into the media pool. I'll go ahead and change the frame rate here. And anything that you're really gonna be working with a lot, right? Especially if it's like a multi-cam sequence or something like that. Here I have some gameplay footage and my face cam, which I know I'm going to be syncing up and treating as a multi-cam and really kind of scrubbing back and forth a lot. Anything that you're really gonna be working with a lot like that, I would consider making proxies. Even if you have a really good computer, sometimes it can be worth it just to select your footage, right click and go down to generate proxy media and just let it take a few minutes to generate that proxy media. Of course, this is dependent on how good of a computer you have, what kind of footage you're working with, the resolution, the frame rate, all of that stuff. A proxy is a low resolution version of your footage that's really easy to play back. And what Resolve will do is switch out your footage with that low resolution kind of preview footage. And it makes it really, really easy to scrub back and forth. And you get really, really snappy results. It may seem annoying to take a little bit to make proxies, but it's such a nice workflow after that to where you don't even kind of realize you're using proxies. Everything just works really well that it's certainly worth it. And I can kind of zoom in here and we can look at the, uh, the quality because if I go up to playhead and go to proxy handling, I can disable the proxies. We have our nicer looking footage here. And as I scrub back and forth, it's just not quite as responsive. But if I switch back to proxies, then oh baby, it's beautiful. And that's the thing is while you're editing, you don't really need to look at the most beautiful stuff. You just need to know a lot more about timing and content. And the way that Resolve uses proxies is when you actually render your project, it switches everything back out to the high res media before you render it out. There's really no downside other than you have to take a few minutes to render the proxies at the beginning. Get it set up, let it start rendering and go to lunch, and then you can come back and crush on your edit. Another awesome workflow tip is if you have a couple things that you need to sync up. So again, for this kind of video game review, this kind of let's play video, I have my screen and I have my camera. And depending on how you record, if you have the same audio in two of your clips, you can just go over to the cut page and select the two clips that you want to sync up. So I got screen and cam, and I can hit this sync clips button. That'll bring up our sync clips window, and I can sync it by time code, audio, in or out. I'll just select audio because I know we have the same audio on both of these clips, and I'll hit sync. 
and it will analyze it and make sure that they sync up. And then I can just hit save sync. And from there, here in the cut page, I can right click and create new timeline using selected clips. I can just make a timeline with my screen clip here. And if I go over to sync bin and I scrub through my timeline, it's going to show me my camera in sync with whatever's happening in my timeline. This is even if I cut things up and everything's like super crazy, whatever it is, whatever clip I'm over, it's going to show me my synced camera clip. I can select this, it'll set an in and an out, and I could do something like place on top, and that will put this right on top where it should be in perfect sync. I can also, in my sync bin, just click on my camera, and I can scrub through and find something that is exciting, like, you know, getting excited about something. I can hit an in and an out. And if I hit this button source overwrite, what it's going to do is find where this is supposed to go in the timeline to sync it up to this clip. And it's just going to put it there no matter where my playhead is. And now we have this perfectly synced up exactly where it's supposed to be. So this is a great way to find the interesting parts in a multicam. Like I said, I can kind of just grab my face cam here. And anytime something happens, like I can select that in out source overwrite and just kind of keep going through here, finding sections that are interesting and putting them where they're supposed to be. From there, I could do this in the cut page or the edit page. I can go through and just kind of delete the parts that don't have that extra camera because I know those are going to be the most important parts. So I can just cut this with S on my keyboard or control backslash and I can trim stuff by using Q or W or by default control shift left or right bracket to basically trim this clip and then move everything down like that just in one foul swoop. Boom, like this. Again, I can hit, I can split it right here with the playhead. And again, like that, split. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. And that's a quick way to trim down a huge amount of material. And I didn't even need to watch it or listen to it, but I have a pretty good idea that something interesting, something cool happened at these parts. Another little time saving tip is if you select a piece of footage and you go up here to the timeline viewer, if you click on this little button, that will bring up the transform controls and you can pretty easily do like a picture in picture thing and switch this to crop and kind of do some quick cropping. And that's just a little bit easier to kind of move things around like that rather than opening up the inspector and kind of messing with these controls, more of a visual way to do it. Makes it really quick. If you want to apply this kind of thing to like our other clips here, I can select this and hit control C and then select whatever clips I want to paste those attributes to and hit alt V that'll bring up our paste attributes. And you can check whatever things you want to paste from your copied clip and hit apply. And now everything will have that same transform on it. If I want to get rid of certain audio tracks, just select the audio separately from the video. I can hold down alt or option and click on it to select it without selecting the video track as well. And this is just a lot faster to do that real quick rather than go up here and enable and disable linked selection and then select it that way. So what I'll often do is hold down alt and then just box select the tracks that I want to delete and I'll hit backspace. If I want to move clips around, I can hold down alt and select them. And then with alt still down, I can hit up and down on the keyboard to move these tracks around and I can reorder them like that super quick. And once I have a selection of kind of a certain category, a lot of the time what I'll do is select all of it, right click and go to clip color and, you know, color code it. So this is all of my footage with the gameplay and the face cam. And then if I have something like an intro where I'm actually talking to the camera, I can throw this down into the timeline and chop this up in the timeline like this. Again, select my tracks holding alt and move that up. And now I have my intro. I can right click on that and color that something different so that I just have this kind of visual 
feedback of, you know, this is the yellow section, this is the pink section. In the pink section, it looks like this. The yellow section is the intro, you know? And so if I have something similar like an outro, I might have my intro and my outro the same color. Just so even just looking at the tracks, I can really kind of tell what section I'm at without having to play through it. The more that you can minimize having to play through things, the faster you can work. Similar thing is if we have something like a voiceover, so this is just me reading a script off of one of the screens, I can grab just my audio by dragging this audio waveform down here. Again, I'll hit Alt and get rid of my extra track. Hold down Alt and bring that up. And I can go through and chop this up. Again, just using split at playhead and using that ripple trim from beginning or ripple trim from end to get rid of that silence. And a lot of the time what I'll do with voiceovers is I'll just make this audio real big and I can just move through here and I'll just literally, without even listening to it, I'll just go through and cut out the silence because then I don't have to listen to it and I know I'm probably not going to use it. And I have everything kind of trimmed here and split up into sections. And then I can listen through and see what everything is. The other thing that I do a lot when it comes to voiceovers and things like interviews is whatever I'm talking about right here, I'll go to my effects panel and grab an adjustment clip and put this over this audio clip. And when you select that, you can go over to the inspector under file and you can rename it. And so this might be, you know, features and I can alt drag to duplicate this and make it the same size as my next audio clip, and I can listen to this and label it whatever I'm talking about here. And so I can go through my whole VO, and not only do I listen to it just for content, but I can also label things so that I can tell visually what each section is about without having to listen through it again. This is really similar to kind of the color coding thing. So now I sort of have a to-do list on what kind of B-roll I need to search out for to cover this voiceover. So from there, I can do something like grab my gameplay and I'll look for something like features. You know, look at all these different characters. And I can grab just the video and throw this over our features thing. And I can kind of rough this in. So this clip has to do with features. Next, we need a clip that has to do with art. So I'll grab something where we can see the art, great put this over our art thing, and I'm just really roughly throwing this footage in there. Something that's fun, you know, we have kind of beaten up on the boss here. Great. I can throw that in there. And now I have at least a choice of what I can put over my dialogue without having to listen through it over and over and over. And this kind of brings me to a major thing. Anytime that you work on an edit like this or really any kind of project, you wanna work in passes. What that means is that you start kind of broad, you start rough, and then you get more and more detailed as you go. So what I would do is go through and label each of these, and then I go through and find a basic clip that would work for each of these. And then I would do something like take these two sections, this pink section and and this green section, and I'd kind of mix those together, right? We'll see if this clip would work before this pink clip, and maybe this one would work better at the end and just really roughly putting this together, playing through this, listening through it, because you have to at this point, but getting really the basic layout of our video so that even as I've only worked on this a little bit, it's still a watchable story with a beginning, a middle, and an end. This not only keeps you focused on what you need to do because you don't get too obsessed with any little detail at first, but it's also really safe because if I run out of time and I have to render this for whatever reason, it at least will make some sense from beginning to end instead of looking amazing for three seconds and then having nothing after that. So it's a really smart way to work. And so I go through this whole thing and a lot of the time I'll make sure that the dialogue makes sense, that I'm saying what needs to be said and that everything's kind of clear through that. Then I'll put some basic B-roll over stuff. Then I'll do a pass where I decide if it's the best B-roll. Then I'll do a pass where I wanna make sure that all the transitions are really smooth. And then I wanna make sure everything's really pretty. And it just kind of gets to the point where it's like, all right, you know, on the fifth or sixth pass, then I'm wondering like, ooh, should I take this and zoom it in slightly or not? 
That's a detail that isn't maybe the most important, but does make it a little better and would be appropriate to work on when I have the project nearly finished. Speaking of finishing projects, let's just get rid of this stuff and say that this is our locked edit and it looks really good. If we want to add some graphics, there are a few ways to do that. The easiest way is probably just to grab a title like this and keep things really basic, right? So I can just add some text. I can go through and change my font, whatever I want to do. And I can make things look really nice just by adding some simple text and adding some kind of transition into the text, even something like barn door, where it kind of animates on like this. And that looks fine. It looks, it looks classy. It's all right. If you don't have any time or you don't know a whole lot about graphics or you just don't want to deal with it, I would do something like this. If you do want to get a little bit more fancy, there are some built-in fusion titles, something like this that kind of comes in with the glitch, which is kind of neat. So we have this kind of glitch transition bringing it in. That looks nice. And I can change the text from there. If you really want to get fancy, you can make your own graphics. The way that I would do that is I would right click here in the media pool and add a new fusion composition. And I'll just call this graphics. And double click on that. And that's going to open up the fusion composition from the media pool. So this doesn't live in a timeline. This is kind of its own separate thing. And then from there, depending on how comfortable you are with fusion, you could make your graphics, right? Usually what I'll do is start with a background and then turn the alpha all the way down. So we have a clear background and then you can put your text over things. You can add some kind of colored background like this, really whatever you want to do. One of my standbys is just to add a rectangle mask to both the background and the text so that it masks them both together. And we can kind of do like a center reveal thing like that. And you can animate that in Fusion. We'll just animate the width like this. And now it kind of pops open. We can go to the spline panel, select width, and click on this zoom to fit. I'll select this last keyframe and hit F on the keyboard to flatten out that curve. And now it kind of slows down before it stops. And then we have our graphics here. I can switch back to the edit page and take these graphics and just drag them into the timeline. And now I have this kind of reusable quick graphics for this project. I can also alt drag these graphics and I can edit this within the timeline. I'll just make sure I'm over it here with my playhead and switch back to fusion. And I can change this text here in fusion switch back to edit, and now we have the ending graphics and we have the beginning graphics here. So that's a great way to kind of instance multiple different versions of some graphics using a fusion composition. And whatever changes I do to these will just live in the timeline. So if I switch to here and we'll call this beginning, we have our beginning and our end. But if I grab my graphics again from the media pool and drag it down, we'll see it still says text because that's kind of the version that we have saved in this comp in the media pool. So that's a quick way to make some fancy graphics. Again, if you're into motion graphics and you're excited about that, that's a pretty slick way to do it. You can also save these out as a template, but that's for another video. Once everything looks good visually and you have your edit pretty much locked, we want to make sure that the audio sounds good. So we'll switch over to Fairlight. And generally what I do, is any kind of dialogue, I'll put some dynamics on. So this first track, this audio one, here in the mixer under audio one, I can just double click where it says dynamics. And they have a bunch of presets in Resolve 18. So we can do something like dialogue compression and maybe boost the makeup a little bit. And we can adjust this so that it makes my dialogue loud enough to be heard on, you know, terrible laptop speakers. And we could adjust our music or our kind of secondary audio separately, right? So maybe we want to do something like EQ that, take away some of the one to two K range like that so that it's easier to hear over the music. Kind of depends on what you're going for, but some kind of mixing here in the Fairlight page, I think is always really useful. So even if you're afraid of Fairlight, just pop into Fairlight and put some dynamics on your dialogue 
That's gonna help things a lot. It just takes a second to do, it's really easy. And then once you're totally done, we switch over to deliver. And what I like to do is use some of these presets to kind of give me a good starting point. So like this YouTube preset, I can switch to that and then switch back to custom export. And then I can adjust all of these different controls, but it starts with the YouTube preset. So what I'll usually like to do is pump up this quality to like 50,000 and this resolution will do UHD. And so we're going to render this in UHD at pretty high quality and then upload to YouTube because it just looks better when you do that. I have a video on why you do that. You can click on that right here. But that's a nice kind of workflow tip to switch to the YouTube preset and then switch back and then kind of just change whatever needs to be changed. And from there, you add to render queue and render it. So there's a whole bunch of workflow tips. Let's take a look at sort of a practical use case for these kind of things. What I did was kind of put together a little sample review video for a video game called Streets of Rage 4. Even if you're not into video games or let's plays or video game reviews, the process and the workflow here is really similar no matter what kind of video you're editing, whether it's a documentary or a narrative or whatever. Let's jump in. So here's a case study of making a little sample game review video where I walk through this whole process, this whole workflow, and uh, you can kind of see how it works practically. First thing I do is start with a new project and just drag my footage into the media pool. And for this one, I wanted to make proxies. Depending on what you're doing and what kind of footage you have, it might be worth it to make proxies. The proxy workflow is so good in Resolve that if you have a few minutes at the beginning of your project, you can, you know, go to the bathroom, get some coffee or whatever. It's really worth taking a few minutes to generate those proxies just so everything's nice and snappy when you're editing. Next thing I did was immediately open up the cut page and I synced my gameplay footage with my face cam. And then I scrubbed through my face cam footage to find any kind of reactions or interesting parts. And I added just those parts to the timeline using the source overwrite button in the cut page. And that automatically put those parts wherever they lived in the timeline because it knows that that footage is synced to my gameplay footage. Then I went through and just deleted the extra parts that don't have the face cam because I know those are going to be the most interesting parts. And then I did a pass on that footage to cut out the extra stuff, so grab the face cam and zoomed in on some of the reactions, zoomed in on the gameplay footage. And I colored all of that pink just so it's easy to distinguish from the other stuff. Then I grab my intro, I get rid of the extra audio tracks, trim it there in the timeline, turn it yellow and just set it aside. Next, I grab my VO and I went through and just deleted all of the extra space and any repeats and just kind of made it really tight where we just have the lines that I wanted. And then I grabbed an adjustment clip and put it over each of the lines and renamed it so that it's just kind of a visual label. And I labeled that with whatever B-roll ideas I might have, just so I don't have to listen to it over and over again to remember what it says. I can just say, oh, this is where I talk about the art. This is where I talk about how polished it is. From there, I just scrubbed through my gameplay footage to find B-roll that I think represents the things that I was talking about and just kind of roughly laid that out in the video tracks above my voiceover. Then I kind of trimmed and moved those around and flattened them down to one layer then it was time to combine the pink clips from earlier and my voiceover clips with the B-roll, and I kind of worked those in. Made some J-cuts and L-cuts, just so that whole thing flowed together smoothly. Added that to the intro, and then I took some of the music from the very beginning of the recording and used that kind of as my intro music. And I crossfaded the game audio because it had music in it. I wanted there to be some kind of transition, maybe not the very best way to do it, but definitely works for this little video. And then I worked on the ending a little bit, having that feel satisfying with the music and the kind of natural fade at the end of that section of the level. Then it was time to add graphics. So I made a new fusion composition and opened that up, started with a black background and then made kind of a deep red background, added a rectangle and rotated it. So it kind of made a slash and I did a similar thing with the white background, actually reused that mask and just offset it in the merge node. Another white background with a rectangle mask, added some text over it, added drop shadows to everything and added a mask over that rectangle and the text. Then I animated that mask to kind of reveal and animated the transform controls in the merge nodes 
so that those slashes kind of flew in. Open up the spline panel to make sure that motion kind of eased in. And I threw those graphics over my intro and a little bit of gameplay under the graphics. And I added a fusion transition to that gameplay footage so it comes in a little bit more dynamically. And then I just alt dragged the graphics from the beginning and put them at the end and then open up that fusion comp from the timeline in fusion and change that text to be our review. And that makes a new version of it separate from the one that we had before. Then I needed to work on audio. So I went into Fairlight and set up my dynamics for my dialogue, set my compressor for my dialogue and EQ'd my dialogue and EQ'd the music, cut the music towards the end and turn the volume down on everything that would be under my talking and brought it back up at the end and had it fade out. And by that point, we were pretty much done. Switched over to the deliver page, started with the YouTube preset, and then went to custom, switched the quality to 50,000 kilobits, resolution to UHD, selected a super pro place to render it like my desktop, and hit render, and we were all done. Do your fists thirst for justice and bad guy faces? Well, today we're reviewing the wonderful Streets of Rage 4. Streets of Rage 4 is the long-awaited sequel to the much-beloved beat-em-up games of the old Sega Genesis days. The art is absolutely stunning, the controls are snappy, and linking together combos to pile up the bad guy bodies is oh so satisfying. It's one of the most polished arcade-style games I've ever played. All in all, Streets of Rage 4 is exactly what I was hoping it would be. Oh. <gasps> Dude, that was amazing! And it reminds me of the simpler times when all I had to do was punch bad guys and drink a good old sunny delight. I give it five stars out of five. Whew, this was a... Uh, this was a, a hefty one, wasn't it? So I hope this was helpful for you. By the way, if you're a little bit new to Resolve and you're kind of wondering, how does this workflow work? I don't understand the pages and all of that kind of stuff. Well, I have a course called Intro to DaVinci Resolve, and it is updated all the time to the latest version of DaVinci Resolve. And we go through exactly that, the best workflow for kind of going through a project in Resolve. Super helpful to get kind of a foundational understanding of how the app works. And you can download footage and follow along. And it's just just really great. In fact, we just updated it with another hour of content that is just beautiful for anyone looking to make their workflow better, especially if you're brand new to Resolve. So check that out here in up here and in the description. Okay. Okay. Let's have an outro that is not awkward for once. Didn't work.